right, hey everybody, Jared Napolitano here. We're going to be streaming a quarterfinal game, potentially match. Um, I'll be doing at least game one. If game one goes super fast, I'll also be doing game two, but if not, James Martin, aka Solid Snack, will take over for game two. Um, this is a quarterfinal match between Dylan, aka, I guess Timo, <laughs> aka Dylan, and Sh Luke's, aka Sean. Um, and they're playing in this premiered a special edition retro event online here on Jemp, aka play.starwarsccg.org, if you're not familiar. A software program or online platform, I guess I should say, for Star Wars customizable card game. So the players have now joined the game. Timo posted it. He got to pick which side to play first since he's the higher seed coming out of the qualifying term, which was uh, 12 games. Um, both these players went 10 and 2. Timo had a slightly higher strength of schedule, so he f finished in the top four and randomly got paired with someone in the bottom four of the top eight, which was Sean. So we have Imperial Occupation versus Hidden Base, Cory Lag Operatives, predictably, or presumably, I should say. Um, as always, let me know if anything comes up with audio or video on the stream here and I will try to troubleshoot it as soon as possible. Um, Timo's playing hidden base, which was extremely common um, in the qualifying term. I think it was about 60, maybe like 57% of all light decks were uh, hidden base. And then for dark, this was not the most popular. Dark Countdown was the most popular, but I think Coriolag operatives were maybe around, I think it was like eight, 9%. We showed these stats on the uh, preview um, stream, which is on the PC YouTube channel, so youtube.com slash at the at symbol Star Wars CCG. That's the official PC YouTube channel. We have some starting cards getting revealed here. Both players playing the Monarch Protection Effects, Yarna, Del Gargan. You have less than 13 cards in hand. Your non-unique cards except effects and interrupts are immune to lost Monarch, we'll say. And uh, so that protects your, a lot of your noun cards from Monarch making them all lost as a result of being duplicates. Um, hopefully, the chat's working here. So let me just do test. Okay, cool. I'm logged in. Sometimes I switch back and forth between my personal Twitch and then I gotta log in each time and do the two factor and all that fun stuff. Um, so players are just getting initial starting cards out here. Um, we'll see how this all progresses. Um, Timo is in Germany, so this is, I think, five or six hours ahead, I think. I think, yeah, Europe does daylight savings, so I think they're five hours ahead. No, no, six. I think England is. I don't know. GMT time, jump time is uh, four hours ahead. I know that right now. I think sometimes it's five. All right. So I should I take that back. So this is Sean's first turn. He gets jungle out. I thought they were still revealing starting cards, or maybe he just did that really quickly. Um, all right, it's so jungle and swamp and draw. Um, they use Twilight Advisor, the signal. Of course, those are the only... Well, I guess there is the um, Don't Tread on Me and Surface Defense starting interrupts are available in Special Edition. This is effectively the format that was available in the very latter part of 1998, so, you know, 24 and a half years ago. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, several of these cards have been eroded either by the PC. I think a couple, maybe, a couple that are legal in this format, of course, were eroded by the PC, but um, the other day I mentioned that projective telepathy was, but that was not right. Um, that was actually a decipher errata to prevent players from canceling their own battle, um, which had some unintended consequences like, uh, you know, suiciding characters and, and benefiting from like scum and villainy and then canceling your own battle because you don't have enough force to pay for, or you choose not to actually, I think you get to choose. All right, so Goonie Tay comes out, so that's going to make all of Sean's ability three plus uh, characters extra deploy. Bespin's out, S-Foils is out. Um, as I mentioned before, Hidden Base with X-Wings was far and away the most popular deck in this format. Um, and um, here we see our X-Wing. Deploys minus two to rendezvous point. Um, that's a good question, Dan, in the chat about who's favorite in this. So. I mean, Sean will be the first to tell you that Timo is a more accomplished player, um, but 
Um, Timo doesn't have as much experience. I would say Sean probably has a little more experience with um, this format, being a little more old school player. Um, but Timo just plays so much that he can pick up a lot of different formats pretty quickly. Um, Sean, also a shout out to him for his volunteer work on this event of researching lots and lots of deck lists and posting them in the forum and giving people options and helping Echo Base Trooper get the uh, sample decks into um, into Gemp so people can use them as a base if they didn't really feel like starting from scratch. So it looks like in the common matchups, thanks to EBT, Imperial Occupation Corey Lag went 5-3 and three versus Hidden Base in the qualifying term. So there were... 227 games total, and that was eight of the games. So, um, you know, not a huge chunk, but the biggest common matchup was Hunt Down versus Hidden Base X Wings. Um, so, so sh by that, but not a big sample size. It's only five and you know five wins versus three losses for Imperial Occupation in this matchup. All right, now comes the Desert. Timo moves the X Wing over at the end of his turn. You know, might have a barrier, but also probably not too worried about a beatdown on turn two here um, from. From Sean as he's probably gonna get set up here and start. I'm not getting some of the tech, at least from what I'm aware of this format. I'm I'm no expert in it. Um, I did play eight games, but I just played mine. What you have learned, and I think one game of ISB. I only actually played two of my uh, dark games. I played all six of my light. All right, so here we have a bunch of stormtrooper cadets. So the deal with core lag operatives, if we see, we see it. Um, they are power plus two if. Dark has a trooper on core lag, so the Stormtrooper Cadet is obviously a trooper. So they're power 3, plus the Cadets, which are 1. Um, <clears throat> once this flips, they draw Battle Destiny, even though there's only 2 ability there. And Sean here is looking pretty good with... Uh, can he do the, the triple? He needs to control 3 Battlegrounds with matching operatives, and he does. So 3 Cadets, 3 core lag <laughs> operatives. Very, um, very systematic turn here from Sean. And he's now on the 7th side, which is going to, and I guess that's com um, interesting. Alright, so he deploys, it flips, and then this triggers this text about, you may retrieve one force whenever you deploy matching operative. So that, that works, even though he just flipped. Another site comes out, and the, the, the operatives deploy site says, most people, let me check the chat, make sure I'm not missing any questions or comments. All right, so Uncle Curveball, that's a uh, that's teacher. Hey, Charlie. Um, he gets the turn one flip, threatening six. Yeah, so so these operatives add one to the four strain. They can't occupy or basically do anything unless they're with some other type of ability. So, you know, after the errata that came out, after operatives were just really really broken at the 1998 World Championships, um, they had all these restrictions put on them, and uh, they can't like four strain by themselves. Um, actually, we could pull those up and go through them in detail because that was actually one of the posts in the event forum. But um, the big thing here is Timo's four strains are now minus one, so he's four strain for zero. Um, just a reminder, this is match play, so they're going to play a second match immediately after this and switch sides. Um, deck lists were locked uh, a couple weeks ago. Or not a couple weeks ago, a couple days ago. And I, I do need to mention that Timo did have a deck list uh, error, so he was assessed a three differential penalty here. So, you know, if... He basically needs to win by four in net differential to win the match, or possibly effectively three. Like, if, if Sean wins game one by 15, Timo needs to win the game one by at least 18 to force a tie break, 19 to win it straight out. Um, so, yeah, what, um, and we have a an insert here. So there goes the numbers. So all these characters are Destiny 3. So, Timo drains for zero. Sure, why not? Um, so, Sean's looking really good here with pretty good setup. The other thing about this objective is it basically never flips back. <laughs> Flip this card if you do not buy two Battleground sites later to the Renegade Planet. So, just as the game goes on and on, Dark Side is going to get gradually more entrenched on their planet. Um, important to mention to folks who may not be familiar on, on the retro progression, uh, Battle Plan and Battle Order are not available yet. <laughs> and that would be a huge card to slow down um, operatives. Um, those came out in Endor, which is the next expansion, which was about, I think, June of 1999. Um, and a very, very good and fair card um, in retrospect when you see how quickly operatives can go, how much damage they can pump through. With very little deploy, these characters are deployed one each. Um, team up with Ultimatum out, which is... Not in effect now, but that will be helpful if he gets on three battlegrounds because 
then um, he only loses two force to insert cards. So that's big. Instead of losing nine right now, if, if the insert were to pop, 3,720 to one. He's got Rebel Fleet out, which will cancel one of these drains of two. Um, but he's really going to need to get a couple more X-Wings out here. Of course, they deploy essentially free to Rendezvous Point, and he, he needs to spend a force to move them. Um, and he'll be able to flip eventually. I guess, can he flip now? I think it's, what, five Battlegrounds? This was another errata that came out shortly after Special Edition. Um, I, it's just if a Light has to deploy five Battleground systems, including their hidden base. So... Well, there's a lot to talk about these games. Um, so that was that was a change made. I think that was a PC one, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that you don't have to include your hidden base indicator in your deck. It doesn't count. Whatever's under the objective here, this light side card, is like a 61st card. Um, and, and the way the jump works is you can put, you know, if you have five systems or six, you can put all six of them in your sideboard and choose before you start the game which one you're going to use. Um so Sean's going to get, or he's going to drain here. The first one's canceled by an X-Wing. The second one will get through, and Timo's going to top deck the signal and EPP Obi. Um, and we'll see what the third drain that comes through here is. Oh, I'm sorry. He just flipped. Timo flipped, so he has five systems out. So he's got Kifex, Kashik, Bespin, Tatooine, and Kessel. Um, so Sean is... Oh, and of course... Wait a minute. So he canceled one with the, the objective, canceled one with Rebel Fleet, and he ate the two. Got it. So three. Once he gets onto a second Battleground system, he can then cancel a second drain. So he can cancel all three effectively, but I'm sure Sean's going to gradually branch out to these other Battleground sites. Sean plays Master Move probably to grab a Gick would be my bet, but not 100% certain. But yeah, he does grab Gig, Gick there. So we talked about the hidden base errata, which at first you didn't have to deploy five battleground systems. You could have just you know, started with like a get a, like a one zero system out like Clack Door Seven, and then just flipped and started canceling drains if you wanted, or immediately started choking Dark Side, force choking them. They have to pay one to draw every card, as Sean is doing right now to replenish his hand. Um, but yeah, so Timo dropped to nine. Presumably he's got at least two more X wings, or even one would enable him to get on three battleground systems. Um, turn on ultimatum, enable him to cancel two force drains with the objective. And I'm sure Timo, Timo's got to activate something here to get his stuff out, but I'm sure, <laughs> wow, he can activate 20. I do wonder if Timo's going to not activate the max in an attempt to try to avoid letting that numbers effect pop. Um, so if you're not familiar, in real life, if you have an insert in your deck, you can't count it the way you can normally count any of your piles unless there's an insert in it. Um, I think the rule in the tournament guide is you got to basically the light side play or whoever has the card inserted has to put it into a uniform sleeve um, so it matches so it's not really distinguishable. You have to announce how much you're going to activate. You can't just say, you can't just gradually start kind of counting and then if you, you, you could say I'm going to activate one, all right, it doesn't pop and then you can decide I'm going to activate two. You can't, kind of like be very arbitrary about it. Um, he'll activate two and drop the, yeah, because Timo really does not want to eat nine damage here from a, so yeah, so he just activates six. That's a smart play. And then, you know, these are the types of things that like, if you only play open, <laughs> there's a shield for, you know, these numbers effects, 3,720 to one, and for um, never tell me the odds. But, so you don't really see them that often, but now, you know, it's important to kind of play this game of, you know, how am I going to budget my turn here? Is it worth me activating less and cutting it off to, you know, take down the risk that I get hit with the, the numbers? Another thing that happened there, too, when he played Organized Attack to take cards in, he shuffled down, we'll say. So, you know, the more cards you use on your prior turn, you're just gradually decreasing the odds that the numbers is going to pop because you have more cards that potentially... I mean, in theory, you, you could shuffle it and it could be the second card of your deck. That's entirely possible as well. Um, but I think the math might say that the more cards you have in your reserve deck, or, the more, or if you have 20 cards in your reserve deck and 10 in your use pile, and in that 20 is a is an odds, you know, if you then shuffle when there's 30 after recirculation, you know, I, I think that's better, right? I mean, if anyone's a math teacher, they can confirm that to me. Um, all right, so Timo gets the two X-Wings out, moves them both away, 
And I think he drew a couple there at the end. Yeah, drew two, and now he's got ultimatum going. So that's very good. So Dino's in pretty good shape here. In his 11-card hand, he very, very, very likely has at least one X-Wing. Um, so he's going to cancel all three of these drains. So Timo stabilized very quickly here. Um, that was well done. Um, one of the fun stats that EBT put in his stats post for this event was hidden base record based on copies of the card X-Wing. <laughs> so if your hidden base deck had zero X-Wings, you won 50% of the time. You went 17 and 17. So those, I guess, were... You know, hidden base mains decks or hidden base with like, I don't know, like <laughs> maybe Corvettes or something else like that. Um, not not this popular X-Wing build. If you had between 1 and 12, you won 56% of the time. And that's out of uh, 27 games, so 15 and 12. And if you had 11 to 15 X-Wings, you won 69% of the time. Nice. Um, 46 and 21. So... Um, Sean is going to play Abyssin Ornament to upload a crew lag operative. Um, the one thing I experienced when I was playing against this deck by somebody else, um, if you kind of go down here and keep killing the operatives, they, they just keep getting circulated around because they go to the Lost Pile and then they could, he can deploy more and that retrieves them. Plus, of course, yeah, Abyssin Ornament's going to be a thing for their once-per-game retrieval. He can put them onto Den of Thieves to cancel drains. Like It's kind of like 99 operatives on the wall. Like You take one down, you pass it around, you put it on the table, you put it in your lost pile, you get it back to your hand, or you retrieve it, you draw it, you throw it on Den of Thieves to cancel a drain, which I think Sean probably wishes he has Den of Thieves right now to cancel this Kessel drain, because that's really the only damage that Timo's going to be getting through here of uh, up to. And there it is. So, Sean gets Den of Thieves out here. <laughs> that's the other thing about these four bats. In, in a lot of ways, there's more blowout cards, there's less really abusive strategies, um... Or there, there's more abusive strategies, I should say, and more blowout cards is what I meant to say. Um, but at the same time, you can also get in some of these grindy games where, like, Aim High isn't even a card yet. So D Dark can retrieve pretty easily. Um, they don't have to worry about ever paying for it. Secret Plans came out, of course, in, in Special Edition here. Um, but never tell me the odds, you know, it could do nine damage, it could do two. Like, some of the games might go pretty quickly because there's a lot of damage and, and, and big blowouts that happen, and some games might be... Like this, where right now, um, I guess Dark is... Now Sean is going to be threatening. He's actually going to be able to get two drains of two through it, right? And that pops, so here comes two damage here. Whereas uh, Timo's only going to be getting... He's not going to get anything through. Because <laughs> that drain of Kessel is just going to be cancelled. So, alright, so it'll be interesting to see how Dylan responds with four damage coming through. Yeah, so we did see an EPP Obi-Wan, so maybe... You know, he tries to come down here, but, you know, even if he comes down with Obi-Wan at, like, the forest, even if he hits one, he's not going to be able to get rid of the other because it's full, it's immune. Or I guess all your characters present are immune to attrition. It's not just Imperials the way, like, the Yavin forest is. Wow. So, wait, what happened here? Oh, team, I wouldn't have done that. What did... <laughs> right, so he's got ultimatum in effect, right? So he would have only had to lose two, but he... Wouldn't it have been better for him? Maybe I'm missing something. As Timo plays Monarch or Grimtosh Lost, trying to get some... Oh, wow. He got three gigs. Three gigs. And that looks like it might be it. Yeah, so you can retrieve the cadets, too. It doesn't have to be an alien. So that's going to be three gigs of the Lost Pile, but I'm still confused there because Timo had to lose nine, but wouldn't it have been reduced... To two, you lose more, no more than two force to each force drain or insert card while you occupy at least three battlegrounds. So would it have been better for him just to lose two there rather than burn as it could be worse and not to pay nine force? That's the part I'm not getting. Um, forget the interrupts were excluded, yeah. Yep, good old, uh, <laughs> I'm sure Sean, Sean, yeah. I'm, I'm sure he's aware of it. I mean, at some point, what can you do? You draw the gicks and you can't, like, really throw them away. I mean, I guess he could throw them away to drains. He could throw his duplicate ones away, but... Um, yeah, it's not like he doesn't have Redactor Terminal out. Um, X-Wing goes to Kifex. So that'll actually be a drain of one, because this is normally a two, but it's minus one from the Dark Objective. Maybe Uncle Curveball can fill me in there about that it could be worse, that he spent nine on to stop a drain of two when he had ultimatum out. Like, I know, like, if you if you play it could be worse against a four strain of three while you have... Um, ultimatum in effect, you still have to use the three. Um, 
whereas where you could just lose two. Um, all right, so Timo gets an X-wing off of Rebel Fleet. That was the one with the KFX. Draws a bunch. Sean's gonna go here. So this might get. There might not be <laughs> many battles in this game. Um, these operative decks, if I'm not mistaken, don't typically have much space. Um, and there's really no incentive. He doesn't have to satisfy battle plan. Um, I mean, the, the incentive, I guess, would be to probe and, and knock uh, the objective out of play and be able to get more drains through. Um, but now with three Gix, and that, I mean, that was exactly what Timo was looking for, probably with that lost Grimtosh. Well, let me try to get, get rid of his Gix, and now he's going to have a really hard time. I shouldn't say a really hard time. He's going to have to be careful going to space because Timo could lock S-foils, drop a bunch of X-wings, play organized attack, and really beat down a dark side ship in space and cause a lot of overflow. Um, so you kind of wonder here if both these players, maybe they just take conservative approaches and just try to damage through, but I think that would favor Sean. Um, remember, both these players are going to be able to play like, you know, the once per game retreat, but like all wings report in on the X-wings. Dark can do a Bisson ornament um, on either the cadets or the operatives. Um, but yeah, if you do it on the operatives, then you can... Oh, he's got strategic reserves out here, so that's going to stop those drains. Um, so wouldn't you prefer to retrieve the operatives? Although, because then you could deploy them and retrieve a force with the seven side. I mean, once you get... But you're more inclined, because an operative can't just hold down a site on its own. All right, here comes another pairing. Queer like operatives and stormtrooper cadets. Yeah, so uh, that's good. That makes sense. So the cadets he can double up, and he can get ten cadets on his you know seven diamond sites, and then get, retrieve ten. But yeah, he he's really kind of he's capped by I guess seven with the operative. So okay, then duh, that's something he could do too. He could just deploy an operative and get one of those gigs back. Probably has. Wouldn't be surprised if he has two masterful moves, maybe even three, to fish out these gigs. Hey, we have a unique character. <laughs> Sergeant Major Bursk. Um, so he is a Destiny 3 trooper. I don't think there's a, an insert right now, right? In Timo's reserve deck. There it is. <laughs> Speak of the devil. So that'll be... Um, I wonder if Timo realized that. Timo's not really one to ask for reverts, if I'm not mistaken. Um, although in a competitive game you never know sometimes in a competitive game like this you're more inclined to ask for a revert sometimes you're less inclined um, and Sean's going to draw some here um, transmission terminator from hand spiral from hand red leader so Timo does have a couple of ships besides just X-wings check the chat here yeah um So, there I would do like a life force count, but it might be kind of silly because these players are going to retrieve a bunch at some point. They have several ways to retrieve. Um, I'm trying to think, what retrieval can light side have besides the once per game with all wings? Um, so yeah, just yeah, just a reminder again too. So Timo has a three differential penalty for a deck list error. Um, like I also mentioned before, Timo plays all different formats. He's had. He's made a few type of top eights. He's made the OCS top 16, right? I think a couple years ago he did. Um, and I think he made a top eight at one of the European events. Um, maybe I'm getting mixed up, but... Okay. I can look that up. But yeah, Sean... Plays a little bit of open, not a lot of competitive open. Um, he was actually my opponent this year in the Gem PC. And I think it was the round of uh, 64. All right, Timo's still pushing that four strain to zero through. <laughs> Might as well, right? You're not paying for the drain. Yeah, so Timo has one top eight. And it was... I think it was an OCS, right? He finished ninth in the OCS in 2021. Uh, PC20 finished in 6th. He finished 10th at the European Championships in 2022. All right, so back to the action here. So Luke and Han. So looks like Timo's going for a blowout here. Maybe he's hoping that Sean does not have a gick. 
It's going all three. Wow. Okay. So then we knew that Sean threw three gigs to his lost spot. Could he be playing four gigs? Maybe. Um, but we know the one is, or uh, at least the one is in his reserve deck, right? Because he retrieved it last turn. So we get Trooper Assault here. Really? Their only power? Minus one from Corlax Baseboard Street. So that's not ideal for Teemo. Yeah, is it during... Rebels are power minus one here. So that's actually not the best... I wonder if he should have gone to one of the other sites. He would have had three more power. Um, he can... It, this is an optional to add and draw Battle Destiny here. Um, where you have at least one matching operative. You may add one Battle Destiny. So Teemo draws a four and a two... Never played much hidden base X. This feels like an advantage for Luke's at the moment, pushing eight, receiving eight, or receiving, retrieving three. He could master move in the battle. Yeah, there's no draw their fire out. Um, but we haven't seen him. He doesn't have any sense alter protection. Neither player has that out. Because um, that would be maybe an option for Timo to maybe sense like a master move to pull a gick. Um, oh, all right, so that pops. But again, now this is just going to be two, right? Limited to two because of ultimatum. Alright, so Gold Leader. So yeah, he reaches limit. So Timo loses both from use pile. Gold Leader and Gold One, and it could be worse. Timo's probably, you know, presumably really hoping to get some overflow in here. Um, weapon Destiny. So the other character's going to be hit in forfeit zero. So Timo really needs to draw high here and hope that Sean doesn't have a gick, or else, yeah, the math is not in his favor. Timo draws a four for this first battle destiny. And a two for the second. So not super high, but not super low. So Sean draws a five, which is very fortunate for him. So he's only going to have to peel three here. Honestly, even if he had a gek, I might not use it. Although it's not, I don't think Timo's going to really be able to have uh, more onslaughts in his uh, tool bag here. Or maybe he's got another Luke in hand, but his force is going to start dwindling. He's going to eat a drain of what? Even if he has an X-Wing in his hand so he can cancel three of these drains, that's still three more that are two damage apiece. Um, and that's not good. And there's a chance that Timo doesn't even have a... Um, X-Wing in his hand. Small chance. All right, so Sean just peels the three. Whether he has the kick or not, we, we do not know. Two Trooper Assaults and a Quirrell like Operative. Excuse me. Sneeze there. All right. All right, so Sean's going to play Twilight Advisor here. See what he pulls out of his reserve deck. Hey, look at that, another numbers. Sean's gonna activate it as much as possible. You know, you can insert the the odds. He might have a well if he has another core like operative, he's gonna have to go to that site with uh Obi and Han, which probably yeah, so that was a good point by Uncle Kirkwall in the chat. He probably has another Luke, because yeah, otherwise Maybe he would have lost Obi and keep Luke and Han a little more potent because you get the extra battle destiny, but Timo didn't have any force at the end of his turn to move over. So Timo does cancel with Rebel Fleet. Timo tosses Hyperscape, Rebel Barrier. Um, this is the first of the quarterfinal games, or quarterfinal matches to play. The second scheduled one is going to be between um, Dr. Torch, uh, Paul Feldman, and uh, Mr. Yellow, Johnny Chu. That's going to be this Monday, June 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern. And they're planning to play both games that match. That should be... Um, the, the schedule is going to be uh, Dan T. Tartag 1. Tartag Leon is going to be doing play-by-play -play with Justin Desai as color. That is the plan as of now. Of course, Justin, a uh, longtime teammate with Johnny... Um, and I, I saw Justin playing some games in this format leading up to the event. Um, 
wasn't sure if he was going to sign up or if he was you know, helping out Johnny and his kids kind of get ready for the format and get up to speed. Um, I know Johnny, as mentioned, he after last year, really likes the uncut sheets. So I'm sure he's really hopeful to get the, uh, the course on light side uncut sheet rare, um, which is going to the grand, the ultimate winner of this event. All right, so Sean's drawn some more cards here, paying to draw... I might have said paying to drain subconsciously. <laughs> um, so we got stacked cards here. I feel like this is like when you play Scott. He always has cards with lots of stacks. We got strategic reserves. Don't have these. I mean, this this operative deck just shuts down so much damage between the objective and then these two four strain cancelers. And there's not nearly as many ways to kind of get around or protect your four strains that there are nowadays. Um, there's a bunch of ways to not allow your opponent to cancel your drain or even reduce your drain. All right, so Stormtrooper Cadet goes to cancel the Kifex Drain of 1, which means that Sean definitely has a Corelag Operative for Den of Thieves, right? Oh, well, maybe not. So he says, crap, wrong drain. So that'll cost him 1, and then now he's going to have to eat the 2 here instead of canceling the Kessel and then losing the 1 to Kifex. How unfortunate. <laughs> I met extra damage. Um, but Sean actually doesn't have a ton of cards face down. Um, he definitely has a much healthier hand here. Split Obi to flip. How is? I don't know how. Dark side. Dark side's never flipping back, right? Um, it only flips if you do not occupy, unless there's something else I'm missing. Um, here comes Luke. The. Um, you're out of the operatives. <laughs> Charlie says, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that too initially. Um, at least routes or ops is easier to flip back. Um, I really struggled with the right line. I was playing like a mind movie of Lauren Main's deck with like on and off the edges, and I just really had no clue how to beat this core like operatives. I don't think he actually had the cadets, it had some other stuff, and it was another player. Um, but it's like you're just pushing the, the ball up the hill, pushing the rock up the hill is the what Sisyphus is the uh, the Greek. Greek story. Um, every time you kill an operative, they go to Lost Pile, and then he deploys another one to retrieve the operative. And it's like, maybe you should just purposely not kill the operatives, was what I was considering, and just keep trying to kill the buddies. Um, but of course, they get retrieved too. In, in this deck, they can easily get retrieved. Um, so it's not like you're putting a, a permanent dent into them. All right, so he goes Luke. He didn't have enough force in his reserve, right, to battle. Um, so he's blocking two of the drains. Maybe that's the better plan here, is just try to block. So now he could shut down three of these drains, presumably if he's got an X-Wing in that eight-card hand. Um, yep. Oh, no, that was one with hidden base. So he can get the damage on the two, and then he's threatening, you know, one, two, you know, three total. One of those is definitely going to get canceled at least. Sean's got plenty of cards in his hand. He has to have at least... Um, <laughs> he probably has multiple. Um, although, although it sounds like last turn he only had one of either a cadet or a quarter leg operative. Um, Timo threw two X-Wings to rendezvous point. Didn't move them. Um, it comes in, it could be worse. Hold your breath and hope that your opponent doesn't have its worse. So that was pretty impressive. So Timo's not going to lose any force to force drains this turn. Um, He's probably starting to set up the all wings or poured in once per game retrieval. One, two, three, four, five, six X wings. He's got one on Rebel Fleet. You know, <laughs> going to Bestman or Tatooine is even if he moved them, like that's not really doing anything. They're drained. Maybe that's why he didn't even spend the two force to move them away. Like, what's the point? But he did want to get them on the table so that you know he doesn't get monocked, and so he doesn't, um, and, and so he has them on the table and out of his hand so that eventually he could do the all-wings. Although now we have another insert. You know, Timo saved four, used two for the could be worse. He's got two more. I wonder, um, you know, maybe Timo just tries to go X-Wing retrieve on his turn um, and, go, and not activate anything to... Although, again, with, with the odds, I mean, basically Sean is going to be in, you know, trading one card for two, so it's like a net one damage is really what he's doing. All right, so down comes two Stormtrooper Cadets to the Prefect's office against Luke. Power, 12. So Burst gets a plus one from the Prefect's office because he's a leader. I guess that makes sense. So he's a Destiny 3. 
trooper leader, so he does a few different uh, things of utility for this. A third stormtrooper do that. They are power plus one from the text. Deploy one. And they've got a, <laughs> so four cadets. So we got a, a gaggle of cadets here. And Luke might be looking at some overflow here. So now he's going to, and Sean's going to draw two battle destiny with two cards in his reserve. Throws down an operative. He's just taking care of all family business here. Um, and putting an operative from his hand down, gets the retrieval. Another cadet. I guess he's hoping. Hujix was not nearly as played as Gick used to be because there was not a puller for it. Another cadet. So <laughs> this makes me, makes me think of why there's a shield nowadays against non-uniques. Because <laughs> every time you'd have to deploy each of these, you'd have to pay one extra force for each other. So there's one cadet, he goes to put a second one, he's got to pay one on top of the deploy. He puts a third down, he's got to pay two first. Um, so that would really stifle this, and he wouldn't be able to just drop. And part of the reason was against this X-Wing Swarm as well. So yeah, so to Dan's point, where's the Yavin 4 Century Shield? So we got a Trooper Assault, Luke's in a bit of trouble here. And Luke's adds the Battle Destiny. D was going to play the All-Wing, so he's going to go for the uh, Retrieval of 6. Part of me thought for a minute there he might just peel this all out and just eat the 14 loss. Oh, so he draws the one, the numbers pops, so his team was going to have to lose two, probably the Tanner, although, if, yeah, he can lose the Tanner, right, you could lose the Destiny, it doesn't ruin everything. I mean, one time I saw an event where someone played the, they had to lose a force, I guess, when some card was drawn, and they lost it, and then they couldn't play Jedi Levitation V to take that card into hand. That's the one thing you got to think about when you're considering losing your Destiny card. Um, yeah, unresolved Destiny draw, so you can lose force from there. So Timo's going to get six force back. There's obviously no secret plans out right now. Timo gets back two X-Wing and all wings, and it's a hit. That would be helpful now that he's at Korolak if you can get that it's a hit to try to, I guess, extend this game and push this through. But, of course, ah, yes, it may be another reason why. Who, did someone say Abyss an ornament? Here comes the Abyss. Yeah, because... If you're Sean here, you got to be worried that Timo's just going to peel this out. Although, I mean, he did just retrieve a bunch, but Timo might think for a minute here, like, wait a minute. I, or Sean might think, I don't want to not be able to get my Abyss and Ornament Retrieval in. So I mean, he might play it now and not draw the second Battle Destiny, which, you know, who cares? He's going to overflow Luke completely to kill Timo's life force either way. Um, just a reminder, the game two is going to be coming up soon. Um, James Martin's going to be doing that. He is, I always forget, he's Solid Snack on Twitch. Um, but he does, he gets auto-hosted, or I forget the new phrase. Um, if you go to the PC's website, it'll pop up. So if, uh, if James is in the chat, maybe I'll just put it here, because I don't think James is all set up. All right, so we have Luke successfully hit somebody. Let me see here, make sure this is... X-Wing for Battle Destiny of 2. Is this James's channel? Yeah, I think it is. Give him a follow on Twitter. If I can just confirm that this is his. <laughs> I think all his videos expired. I think he's... Uh, I think he's this. There he is. Yeah, I was literally just about to paste that. Yeah, thanks, James. So game 2 is going to be here. So yeah, so Timo's just going to peel this all out. So this was the smart play, because he, now he's not going to allow Sean to get that Abyssin in, Abyssin ornament once per game retrieval in, and Sean's just going to eat the 14 damage loss. I mean, maybe maybe Sean didn't even have Abyssin ornament. It's possible it was kind of floating around and wasn't able to find it. Well, yeah, he, actually, Sean just drew one of them. All right, so, so Timo's ready to open up game two. Um, yeah, maybe... Uh, James, are you about ready to go? Because I, I can, I have some time, so I can start this. Maybe I'll just zoom James in. Maybe we can do that. Because I, I have until 2, and that game was not super duper long. All right, so it's 14. Effectively, it's 17 with the, uh, the deckless penalty. Maybe I'll do that. Hey, James, can I zoom you in? Let's do that. Because it looks like they're ready to go. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that game went a little faster than... James was expecting, or not, it went a little faster than I was expecting. So let's do that. All right, so it's posted. Streaming is ready. Of course, with all these games, you know, people got stuff going on, so I don't want to ever have them feel like they're being held up by the stream team. 
Um, so let's just play their game. So let's see. Um, copy invite link. Maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll audible. Hopefully this doesn't completely mess up James's uh, plans. Where is he at? There he is. So they fired the game. Let me know in the chat if you're seeing like an echo or anything. All right, so they're, am I going crazy? This is the total opposite matchup. <laughs> um, so this will be interesting. Um, if, uh, let me just make sure I'm like pulling James here. Because, um, yeah, I asked James because I had a, thought this might have gone like an hour, hour and a half. I only really had until like 1.30. I probably do have until 2, all considered. Um, so, again, let me know in the chat if I'm echoing because I kind of have the, uh, the zoom up as well. But actually, I haven't added it to the stream lab, so that would make sense why it doesn't um doesn't appear here. All right, so to the action here. So game two, let me put up on the screen too. Although, oh, description, let me move this up. All right, so Timo just gets out some sights and draws. Uh, both players, Yarna, well guarded. This is pretty much exactly what happened in the first game. The start, there we go. All right, so I'll update this here so people don't keep asking. <laughs> um, what's the differential? So game two. I'll do Luke's plus 17 is what it effectively is. So Timo needs to win this by 18. All right, down comes the next wing. <laughs> this is going to be very interesting, basically. Just a total total mirror match we have here. James might be all up and running because he's not responding to my Slack. So he might be... Uh, Feel bad. Just figure we can keep this all in one stream. I don't even have to stitch it together later. Uh oh. All right. So uh, Sean deploys an X wing. Moves an X wing. Looks like he passed and didn't draw. Click through draw. So we'll see here. Usually a pretty fair. Um, no, no, no. And it was allowed to be reverted. So Timo Grant said that's something that happens. People just click one button, and you know, in real, I, I'm a big fan of like in real life. Would this happen? Um, and Timo says no problem. So that's good. So this game goes about as quickly as the first one. They'll you know it'll be done. You know, probably around one thirty Eastern here. Okay. All right, so Timo activates his turn two. Got to play a site. Um, let's see here. Do capture. Core like forest comes out. probably see the zoom meeting let me hide this for now until we get james all set up you're probably seeing two of me and you might be seeing an echo actually too let me know if i'm echoing now that we have both the camera up um all right so core leg operatives get thrown down this isn't quite the you know sean had that really really good turn one on his turn in the first game um where he um got a pair of core leg operatives and we have a low bell so that's something we did not see in the first game Hey, James, can you hear me? Let you loud and clear here. Oh, I hear you. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me just make sure to chat. Let me switch off my camera so we're not getting two of me. 
thanks for uh, thanks for the audible. As I'll try to stick to the action here too, as well as while we get set up. So two low bells and a DS six one two. Um, we got James and myself. Make us over the side here. All right, and we got a presence of the force of the swamp. Okay, James, can you talk for a little bit? Let's just make sure the chat can hear you. Yeah, sure. Um, how's it going, guys? I uh, hope everybody's enjoying the top eight uh, stream between Sean and uh, uh, and Timo here. We see a mirror match for the second game, too, which is kind of fun uh, to see. Uh, who can essentially play the decks a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I was just saying that uh, Timo's turn one wasn't quite as explosive as um, Sean's, where he got the pair of uh, Cadet and Corleg Operative down on his turn one. We have two low bells and a DS612, so those are new, so the list isn't exactly the same. The low bells subtracting from forfeit, which is uh, okay. kind of fun there. All right, good. So we get confirmation in the chat that they can hear you loud and clear, which is good. So yeah, th thanks for pivoting, James. I, that first game just went a lot quicker than I was expecting, so I figured maybe we'll just stick with the same stream and, and patch you in, and it's always, always a little more fun with the yeah. second person. Yeah, let me uh, actually technically streaming or something in that so I can get a little more processing power on the one here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure what your uh, um, experience was here, Jared, but I got, I got crushed by, uh, especially the X-Wing Swarms, which was kind of fun. But uh, <laughs> um, it was neat seeing a lot of the high index being played. I, that was an experience that I quite didn't get when I was uh, scrabbling together uh, musicians, for example, when I was younger. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I, I definitely got smashed by this Corlag Operatives build. One with low bells and not the cadets. Um, Hidden Base X, I'm trying to remember. Well, I, like I said uh, initially, um, I, don't, I only actually played my six light side games, and I only played two dark. Actually, I lost to Andy. Andy was doing Hidden Base X-Wings, and he just crushed my hunt or my ISB. It was over very quickly <laughs> with Hidden Base X-Wings. Yeah, the, the only time I won against ten based X Wings was uh, I was playing CCT and I did get the freeze like four people, which was kind of fun. So, oh, nice challenge on lock. Somebody gave me Chewbacca as their initial um, uh, prisoner, and since he's an alien, I was able to play uh, two times Sonic Bombardment. Oh, uh, so I was able to kind of <laughs> do you know fourteen damage between the freeze and, and torturing him, which was kind of nice. weird. Nice. Oh, that's wild. Um, yeah, so Timo just made a comment of like, I hope you don't have your five systems out yet, um, just because that's really going to help Sean, you know, flip yeah. and be able to start canceling two drains. He doesn't have Ripple Fleet out, um, but Sean's got a bunch yeah, of draw if, from here. If Timo can find a way to get that, um, I think it's presence of the force on there, right? That's uh, presence of the force to kind of do some additional damage early. Um, that would be great. But uh, if if Sean can find ways to cancel that drain, it comes a dead card pretty quick. Yeah, so the low bells are Destiny three, so that this could also be numbers as well. DS six one two would surprise me if, and this is one of those remastered errata, decipher errata images, nice crisp and clear, and high res. But yeah, I would be surprised if Timo's running numbers if he's got Destiny two pilots. Um, you know. Yeah, I saw some uh, a pretty nasty that's control, which is a smart move. Uh, seeing that. He's not flipped right now, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if Timo put in something nasty like a town roll or something like that. They get him uh, help, help help hammer away at X wings in space. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Why would Sean not flip here? Maybe he's somewhat respecting that Timo might have some. He's only got four cards in his hand. I was gonna say respecting his space to try to not expose him to getting probed super early. Maybe Sean mm -hmm. wants to try to find some pieces to punch back if. Timo does go to space, but otherwise, I don't know. Oh, does he not have five systems out? He doesn't have his base out. It's, it's oh, one of the that's, oh, that might be the one thing. Yeah, because he definitely has... There's five light side battleground systems out. Yep. So that might be the only thing, yeah. That must be it. And the other thing, too, if, he, if he's packing retrieval and he can easily get those cards back, it's not it's not a big deal, you know, right. uh, putting them in the lost power right now. Yeah. Yeah, because at some point, he, he kind of shuts off all this damage... Um, once he flips and gets Rebel Fleet out, and then uh, he can kind of stabilize for a little bit, deploy a ton of X-Wings, and then you know, get it all back pretty quick. Yeah, this is interesting. So Tebow's just moving characters around. I guess he's moving away from the projection. Okay, that makes sense. But mm -hmm. he really needs to build his hand here, which he's going to... Again, so yeah, this must be... Sean must not have the Battleground system out. Because right now, you would definitely want to flip to make him have a harder time finding 
cards in his hand and building his hand, just generally. So, did Sean draw? He must have drew a little bit at the end of his turn, right? Because he must have known, oh, the cards in my force pile. He drew, it looks like, five cards at the end of his turn uh, two. Yep. So he must have drawn. He's probably going to come from hand this turn. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. I kind of moved away as uh, Timo was peeling. I'm not sure if they've got, like, a Monarch or something like that to help him out with, with card size and so forth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of protection here, but sometimes that's useful to uh, even put cards back from hand. Yeah. Yeah, so just a quick programming note. We've had a bunch of streams this week. Garrett uh, did game reviews last night on Hollow Theater. So check that out on the YouTube channel. I did uh, a spotlight interview with Will Tarbox, who is a, a retro slash open player, and kind of getting his story, which is very interesting. And then I did, I did the preview stream for this top eight, and I have... Two more in the hopper. I want to do like a, um, a booster pack reveal or booster pack break of PC boosters, I'll say. And then um, I also want to do like a MTV Cribs style of, hey, here's all the cool prizes that are going to start finding their way out to people. Um, just to give people more transparency on what the PC prize uh, options are. So those will all be coming up. I'll, uh, oh. was in the top eight for, I would say, most of the... Uh, uh, most of the qualifying term, we had a couple that just kind of played a ton of games late and uh, uh, made their way in, which was kind of fun, including Sean here. Yeah, yeah, Sean made a late run. All right, so Dylan loses a gick off the top to the Kithex drain. We're still not flipped, right? Oh, well, now, okay, it's probably going to come out now, the, uh, the, the Battleground system. So he whiffs on the system. Yeah, he only activated a little here, so... I wonder if uh, that's a, a bad oh, piece no, of yeah. forbidden flip. Oh, gosh. Has he lost any yeah, of the force trains? I don't think so. Right? I mean, yeah, I, I could... I, yeah I, it, it's possible he could have. I, I don't think he lost a, a system just yet. But, uh, <laughs> he lost um, three I guess he was buried in the force pile. He lost three transmissions terminated. But if it was in his force pile... You know what must have... No, well, he would have definitely... De if he had, like, two systems in his reserve deck last turn, right, he would have put the hidden base out. <laughs> and if it was in his force ball, you would think he wouldn't have stopped drawing until he found it. Right? Yeah, I mean, so there's... Um, I mean, he did... Uh, well, let me go back on the, the chat here, but I think he, he deployed a couple things last turn, so uh, he maybe thought he had a good chance of getting it uh, on the recycle here. He only used four, three force, so I mean, yeah, it, it, it's kind of unlikely it would have been in that uh, used pile. Yeah, so he intentionally, I guess, deployed X Wing, you know, not to rendezvous point and not to move, because I guess he really wanted to make sure he used the four force that he activated. So either it's in his force pile and he's digging for it now, which must be it, or it's one of those four force in his used pile. And he activated it this turn, but I'm not sure why he didn't. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll have to get the story afterwards. Um, so he's he's still digging all the way down to. All right, so he's either he's either if if that was his last card, he'd have to take a risk that he or whatever. Timo might have Monarch, but so maybe he finally found it is what my guess would be. All right, so Timo plays master yeah. move. He can't be if he's looking for Coruscant. That can't be the hidden base because um, it has to be something with a parsec between one and eight. Um, and Coruscant, of course, is the only zero. Oh, Monarch lost. So, organized attack, Luke with lightsaber. Oh, boy. I don't see a system. So the X-Wings are going to be safe. The two organized Just attacks... Coruscant there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Coruscant. But Coruscant can't be his hidden base. <laughs> Correct. Uh-oh. But... I mean, I've seen sometimes, too, that Coruscant can be helpful against, like, the cadets because it makes them all deploy plus two. If Rebels... Well, you need to put a Rebel up there, which means you need, like, a Y-Wing, which we just saw Gold Leader and Gold One. But if you have a Rebel here as a pilot or a passenger, Imperials and Imperial Starships will deploy plus two. But, I mean, this this format's kind of crazy. I mean, especially with Hidden Base and Operatives, there's... Both players are activating a ton. <laughs> so that's... Tw uh, yeah, so Sean lost three Gicks in the first game and now he loses two organized attacks but like I don't know what Sean could have really done there I mean like I said there's, it's not like he made a decision not to put them back 
with traffic control <laughs> because he didn't read the card. Um, so. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about even losing the organized attacks here. Sometimes yeah. when you uh, uh, have an opportunity for a beatdown on dark here, right, mm. the counter beat is just so vicious that you can't do it. Yeah, so a few things going on here where Nashon just lost Rebel Fleet, so he doesn't have that out. Um, I was going to say something else, but now I forget. He lost a control. That would have been kind of helpful. This is an X-Wing. Um... I mean, he's got to have a signal or two to help find the Rebel fleet, right? Now, remember, Timo has to win by 18 or 17 and then get a loss pile tiebreaker in his favor. Here's an it's a hit. So that's good for Sean um, in that, you know, he doesn't ultimate him out because the ultimatum would make sense if uh, if he had it to cap that drain down. Mm-hmm. But so, of course, Timo has to basically, you know, he can't go below... 18 or maybe he might risk that Sean might just draw up and win the game of course he's going to have to hope that Timo doesn't have any like use interrupts in his hands and stuff like that but and we're probably a ways off from that even being a consideration we're still pretty early in this game here alright operative I wonder too how many like how many sites is Timo playing how much space is he playing a few things that was that was my, when I lost my train of thought there that was another thing to consider of how much space does Timo have and if and when does he go to space to try to probe if at all I mean, I would think BS612 would be uh, indicative that he's got space there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one of the best pilots from back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, the OG adds three. All right, Sergeant Torrent and Dr. E. Dr. E. So you wouldn't play Dr. E unless you had a weapon, right? Maybe he helps with the numbers case because he's a three and he's an ability two. Um. You know, obviously also awesome with disarmed another pilot so maybe maybe it still indicates that he's playing space somewhere all right another presence of the force so we have the two other quarterfinal matchups they're not scheduled yet they're going to be between Andy actually I have this saved <laughs> I know. Uh, Ian is the one seed and he is playing against I think Andy if I'm not mistaken I can pull that up real quick because Timo draws a bunch and he doesn't have to pay to draw because Sean's not on the seventh side yeah Ian versus Andy Ian versus Andy and then Joe is the two seed and he's playing against Thomas Um, so that's going to be you know the two versus eight effectively Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so fun to see this unfold together uh... Paul Feldman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, yeah, we've got a few folks in this top eight that have told me they never made top eights before. Um, so they'll get, even if they're not open players, they're going to get the top eight foil slip. Uh, the pair, the Invisible Hand Border Breaker and the Tidarium V Border Breaker, which are pretty cool. So, I don't know, personally, if, even if I wasn't an open player, I'd be like, <laughs> this is symbolic of my top eight. And, and the Purple Poker Chip, of course. All right, so Sean goes to deploy a system... And he gives a verify. There's Coruscant. And so even if he had his hidden base down, he wouldn't be able to deploy Coruscant if he's flipped. So maybe there was a thought uh, okay. of him yeah, that, okay, that wanting to have that system down and being important in the matchup, especially with the yeah. drain modifier. Yeah, and that's what exactly Uncle Curveball in the chat, uh, Charles, is, was on top of. Of Yeah, that's the, thing. That's the part I was missing. Because, <laughs> yeah, once you flip, you may not deploy any more systems. That is a key thing. You may not deploy any systems. So, so yes, yeah, so that's where, yeah, and, and Uncle Charlie pushed that of, you're making a trade-off here of digging for Coruscant, holding off on flipping, allowing Timo to draw more easily, allowing him to get more drains through. But, yeah, you have all wings report and retrieval, so losing some cards, not a huge, in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so now he's going to throw Luke on goal leader, so that's going to activate this game. Where Rebels, or all Imperials are plus two, and Starships. Like, like I was saying before, everyone activates so much force in this format. And mobilization points isn't even act out yet. But maybe it's not this format. Maybe it's more so this matchup that really creates a ton of activation. And yeah, we have over, what, 13 locations, I think? Yeah. All right, so we got a red squadron X-Wing for three. Um, 
Yeah, so Coruscant and Kessel, of course, are two. You know, normally drain threes, but they'll be twos. And yeah, and I guess when <laughs> when you have... I mean, we haven't seen Den of Thieves or Rebel Fleet out this game, so that's interesting. Um, all right, so Kifex game text is activated since... There are two, star, exactly two starships, plus two, and Vol Tazani is doubled. Just in case they have him in the deck. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's got to get the X-Wings out. You know, the more the better, because he's got to get up to, like, a good threshold to uh, do the retrieval. Although at some point, like, what about like a devil's advocate argument of like every X-wing you commit to the table, especially in this case, if you're putting them at systems that are drain zeros, <laughs> you're effectively losing a force to get one more force back. You know what I mean? With the all wings <laughs> retrieval. So like, I wonder if it's almost more valuable to have the card on the table than in your in your force to lose. Maybe I'm overthinking it. All right, so we have the retrieval. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, six. So he draws a two, so he's going to get six back. I wonder, he only got one card in his hand. I guess he's figuring, you know, maybe he could wait and play when he gets more X-Wings out, but maybe having that life force now is more valuable than maybe trying to get too cute with it. I don't know, he's getting the control back. He get, maybe he really wants to get the Rebel Fleet. Rebel Fleet, yeah. yeah that's one of the big ones. If he's got, like, a, um, you know, the signal that he can dig for here. All right, so we get the flip. Yeah, I would think he probably, if I would, I mean, who knows, maybe maybe he's got one Rebel Fleet and, like, three Signals, or two Rebel Fleets and two Signals, something like that. Um, I know in his Lost Pile, he's got his, the Signal starting interrupt, and then three Transmission terminated, and I'm not sure what the other Lost Pile is. Depending on how cheeky he is with, uh, if he's throwing in, like, a on the edge or something like that for Luke here, you know, there's a way that he'd be able to track some of that destiny going in after some drains and, and get a lot of cards back, too. Yeah. Uh-oh. We got a little stream. Probably not in the deck, but people, people make some interesting choices in these formats. <clears throat> Yeah, chat. Keep letting me know if, if the stream is. Maybe I'll um, I'll take the video off of. Um, maybe that'll help. All right, so we got more drains coming through from Timo. Timo, or not Timo, James, can you kind of take primary? Um, I might be able to fix something. Um, or maybe not. Maybe I'll do something that helps. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I've got uh, Luke's losing for drains here. It's a hit, and the signal came off the top. All right, that's all. Uh, one drain so far, so we should have another one. Oh, well, that one I go on the planets that that's farthest from. <clears throat> that would have canceled a lot of the drain bonuses, turning coral lag. That would have been a game winner most likely if he was able to get that one. He'd be able to uh, deploy on Tatooine as long as he's holding Tatooine. You'd be able to target coral lag and. Um, remove all the uh, drain bonuses from the operatives. So that would have really put uh, Timo in a bind. So let's use uh, both of his cancels and see what uh, Dylan's got here. And there he does have some space here, a TIE scout. Luke's uh, lamenting uh, the uh, planet that's farthest from here. <laughs> Timo probing Coruscant here, which might have been a smart play just based on when they were coming out, but uh, reading the card as far as hidden base, uh, uh, he would be able to see on that card that uh, um, you can't make Coruscant the hidden base there. So 
a little bit of a wasted play. And, uh, he would have had some ability to uh, try another plant instead. So, well, one of the things that you always worry about as far as uh, deploying in front of a big X-Wing swarm here is uh, a rebel barrier for the TIE Scout. So we'll see um, what becomes of that TIE Scout. You probably will get, uh, is facing down quite a bit of battle damage from our good buddies, the X-Wings there. And still no, um, still no, uh, success in probing the hidden base uh, from the Kessel. I always thought that that would probably be a smart move by the player. At least, you know, if somebody goes and probes Kessel, then, then that's where all your fleet is, and they're look, staring a big beat down. But uh, obviously, uh, as Jared mentioned, gets a little bit easier to pull for the dark side player here. So um, as a result here, maybe uh, it's it's uh, because of the fact that Gick is in many of the decks, uh, your hidden base being somewhere else, is, it might make a lot of sense. I feel like whenever I play it, everybody likes making a sheet, but uh, who knows? I'm sure there's a lot of um, thought that goes in the which hidden base you make uh, and, and who you use. So maybe telegraphing that uh, he doesn't have a gig here, or at least maybe wanting to draw some battle destiny. Uh, Timo puts down both Vader and Tarkin onto this TIE scout. Yeah, James, I'm here. So this, this is interesting. So you got Vader and Tarkin together uh, up in space. Yeah. It Just makes like me moves. think that uh, Timo might not have a, a gig on hand uh, for this impending battle here. Ability, ability, ability. Team has got some high destiny, so maybe maybe they'll draw high and still uh, do a number on, on this group. But uh, I, I'd be worried with the uh, uh, S-foils there. Um, could be a lot of battle damage coming if he doesn't have the right cards. Okay, so team is just going to pass. He's not messing with those three X-Wings. Makes sense, I guess, even though you can cancel he, he a destiny. Got, he got barriered. Is, uh, oh, okay, I missed that. My bad. So that's, he didn't have a choice. Huh. Sean doesn't have a lot in hand, only two. Um, but he does have S-foils, which would jack up his power considerably at uh, each of these locations. <laughs> for another revert here. Vader and Targon's 13, plus another plus battle destiny. So I guess it's, it's still hard to overflow that TIE Scout Kessel. You need to commit a lot more cards, I think, there in order to do more damage. Mm -hmm. There's the Rebel Fleet, which may be important. Yeah, it should be huge. Timo's at like 29 total, and he's got to win by 18, basically. 22 force activated. <laughs> Unfortunately, not a lot, of, not a real easy way for Sean to use that.
Right, so we probe Kifex. Oh. Yeah. Miss? I don't know. I feel like Kashyyyk is the, the top uh, hidden base that I've seen. <laughs> I've had success and, and seen that been the one that uh, people like choosing. Yeah. These Thai scouts are pretty feisty. You get two characters on them plus the permanent pilot. Destiny 4. Oh boy. This is going to be a gig. <laughs> yeah. So ability, ability, ability did go here, which was uh, helping Timo's calls. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine that that's, uh, you know, Timo would have gone in front of him here without some sort of trick, so. Mm -hmm. See what happens with the second battle as well. Yeah, he's got to have the second gig, right? I think not, but I, there's a lot of forfeit that cancel destiny draw over there. So uh, mm -hmm. plus plus Timo is getting battle destiny. Right, um, he can cancel. Opponents. I think yeah, he'll be Sean fine. Has to attack here though. Yeah. Yeah, you can't overthink it. Just uh, at least <laughs> make him show him the geck, at least. Or not the geck, but chip away at least. There's a world where Teemo draws high, and it, it uh, you know, one of the one of the Teemo, uh, uh, you know, Destiny draws pop up in his deck, and uh, it, it looks really bad with Vader counter beating even. Did he, he activated the foil so they can't move. He can't run away, right? Yes, they, that, that's why they've got so much power. Yeah, okay, so that, that makes the des decision not super duper easy. <laughs> yeah, Luke, Luke's just doing the math that I kind of was. Uh... <laughs> trying to figure out uh, and had the luxury of figuring out uh, while he was making other card choices. <clears throat> but then, yeah, so even if he loses two and he can't run away with the uh, the Red Squadron, this thing soaks up 11. Yeah, I... I, I think what Luke's is worried about is there, there's a world where Timo draws, let's say, a six here and then he just peels... You know, Tarkin and one, and then like the counterbeat looks bad, and he like winds up losing Kessel. You know, so there, there's, uh, um, yeah, th there's risk in there, but I think it's something he's just got to do. Because what's the alternative? If he just draws here, gets some more ships, and then attacks in the next turn. Yeah, I mean, well, like he's okay. he's like certainly looking at a fine battle here. I would think Timo would probably run and try and find the hidden base, you know. But uh, uh, oh, he's actually drawing. So. He's a little spooked, at least. I mean, there there is a spot where if Tino draws like a three, uh, which you know a lot of his de destinies I think would be three, um, that it just goes fine, and and Timo's got to peel probably both characters there. I think Luke's probably needed like one more ship to be confident, and. Uh, at that point, I think he'd be pretty reasonable to expect a clear from that system. Yeah, I'm not sure it's like no brainer necessarily, but I, I, I don't know. I'm an aggressive player. I probably would have attacked there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because even if he, like, I don't think he's ever going to lose Kessel permanently. Like, eventually he's going to get Kessel. 
and he actually he really needs Kessel because it's possible he gets probed here eventually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, that's that's one of the few systems he can push damage through on. So it's, it's you know, if losing it would be a disaster. No, it could be worse. All these, uh, <laughs> all these control cards, as you uh, probably saw, if you wound up playing some of the, um, some of the games on the format here. This is looking like Timo might be able to get the probe done. I think he will, but that barrier makes me think that uh, he he's still at the wrong system here. Yeah. Yep, that's a miss. So three left here. The nice thing about it is if Timo is able to finally probe the uh, correct system, he's going to get all those probe cards back, So which will be helpful because he's chasing down a lot of differential here. Wow, he's putting two characters. So he's really respecting like a counter beat. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's screams, he, yes. screams he has no gick. <laughs> he kind of has to run away, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it really, he really needs to get to the point where he probes the hidden base. I mean, he's uh, just based on depending exactly what uh, he's got in hand, because I think he still has a uh, a Bison retrieval potentially here. Uh, he's still looking you know, at like only a couple more turns here before he's under the threshold. Some of it might even come down to whether Kashyyyk is the hidden base or not. So, so. even after game one, we have some uh, high drama in game two here. Mm -hmm. I'd say the hidden base is Kashyyyk if I'm uh, if, if we're placing bets at all. So yeah, but, uh, we'll see. that would really make this an interesting finish. Well, now Timo's down to 17 total, 16 or yeah, 16 including hand, but that doesn't really help if he. But he can get those cards back one, two, three, four, so he can get up to 18, which is exactly what he needs. But then he's not going to be able to. Uh, Ooh, this push is through, close. Uh, 50 it's be close. damage you know, plus. <laughs> so. if he had a card in hand that was like an operative he could retrieve a force which would be big and he hasn't used his abyssin ornament yet yeah, we're, also, we're also talking about him being the you know deck uh, Sean and like basically a turn here and I think that that's not um, likely to happen here alright so we get the probe and that's it. All right, so yep. Timo hits it. So now he's going to get one, two, three, four, five cards back. I was missing one. Well, I, was, I had four, but this is now the fifth. He just placed that last one, so that's basically one from hand going back yeah, in. Yeah, in effect, he's cycling back into his reserve.
and then he could do the retrieval. Yeah, just out of this, and that would be huge uh, for yeah. uh, having the stick around here. Because he's now doing a boatload of damage. But Luke's might have been able to uh, track around, say, like, uh, it could be worse or something, so. Mm hmm. Yeah, because presumably Sean's going to get in damage here. Team only has one card in his hand, and he doesn't have Den of Thieves out. So <laughs> this is going to be close. Last card in the reserve deck is five, as uh, Sean points out. says I saw it. <laughs> Sean's trying to tell us what the reserve tech uh, destiny is to help us out. that play I think it's just a block uh, drain a two and obviously the satisfiability ability ability I think I think Sean's still gonna get this right uh, it looks like it yeah I mean uh, I <laughs> I would start worrying if Timo can draw into an abyssin ornament maybe Sean has an it's a hit if he's going right to core lag has to, yeah, that's a drain of zero otherwise. And that would be a nice card to have for, like, Rebel Fleet. I mean, he probably is not the one in his hand. But. Yep. But if he's got two his hits in his hand, for example, you know, that's, uh, he's going to enjoy having that guy there. Sorry to the chat if there's any audio in and out. I think what's happening is I'm streaming, I'm hosting hosting James in, and my wife's on a call at the same time. It's all video. <laughs> and uh, and I'm, we're both on Wi-Fi. So I know I think next time I'll be able to hardwire into my router, and that should help. Um, so that even if my wife's on a call and I have someone else uploading video to me and, and backwards, um, it should be fine. So I just, I'm seeing some drop frames here. So apologize if there's a little bit of choppiness but hopefully we get to the ending here and everyone knows what's going on and now I know for next time so apologies if so it looks like is that the fourth transmission terminated for Sean <laughs> or did he retrieve mm -hmm. one at one point alright Sean loses ultimatum which would that be helpful I mean it's a card he'd burn Good. it would cap the swamp drain Yep, that would be it, really. But there's only so many turns left in this game, so. Mm -hmm. Everything else is too. I really don't think it's that big a deal. You're canceling one drain anyway, so you might as well make it. If you're canceling the three consistently, it really right. is a dead card. Right. And now Sean already used his all wings retrieval, right? Oh, there's the drain of three. So he hits a hit. Yes. He should try to track that around, right? If. It's going to be a little tough because he's basically got to use no force, but if you're Timo, you got to move to Korolag here, right, with one of those ships. Yeah, or potentially even block the Coruscant drain is something he can't think reach. About. I don't think he actually gets there, though. I know, he doesn't reach it. It's only five. I just got to five, yeah. Well, not, not, not the like next turn, at least. got the... Needs two turns to get there. Mm -hmm. He can't really... I don't know if he can afford to move in front of Kifex either. Yeah, I think that's too much power. I mean, Timo's probably doing... Uh, he's got to be doing the math here. I wonder if he just like moves both 
scouts to like Kessel and just tries to stall. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, I think he's got to find a way to stall and draw into Abyssin and make sure that that hits with a retrievable five. <laughs> But then even if Luke Sean is uh, doing some decent tracking or has some, some additional tricks, then hopefully he still gets a, uh, uh, if, if he has this last two turns with, say, like, uh, could be worse, uh, it's a hit uh, combination thereof, you know, then then that's that's also bad for a team on. Timo's thinking. So Sean is showing five damage right now. And, uh, you, Timo would need to block one of Kifex, Coruscant, uh, and or Kessel to reduce that from her. <laughs> Isn't it the end of the turn or is it the end of the deploy phase? It's and it's uh, only loops. Well, yeah, that it's, it's Timo's card. <laughs> yeah, stress stress running high here as we come in for a landing. Yeah. The end of opponent's deploy phase. Yeah. Oh, so he blocks the potential for an it's a hit, and then he's gonna just try to wait out Kessel. But Timo's doing 11 damage. Mm -hmm. So Sean yeah, could Sean presumably left. squeeze out. You know, he should be able to get... But he's only going to get 3 and 3. So Timo's now under. He's got to be digging for the Abyss. And if he doesn't find it, he's kind of screwed, right? <laughs> Yeah, so he's saying he's digging for it, okay. Mm -hmm. There's got to be on there, so. But now that he's digging for it, that that's <laughs> problematic. That's yeah. obviously reducing life force, so it's very unlikely that all nine of those cards can get back to deck. Yeah, like how many use interrupts can he have? I think he, Hemo he... needed to kind of have it on top of his force pile there, in, in short. Yeah. So Sean's going to get through three damage. I mean, I, I would I think mean, I would feel fairly comfortable drawing up. I mean, that's what, nine here? How many of those cards can he get back, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. So even if he gets the Abyssin off, so he gets up to 14, that would be a tie without the deck list penalty. But that's assuming he has no other used interrupts in his hand. Like, he might have a masterful move. Yeah, but you know, why is he losing from reserve block. deck? Why is Timo losing from reserve deck? Eight must not. Oh, uh, maybe he knew there was a five and didn't want to whiff on the ornament because he only has five operatives out, right? Yes, correct. I forgot if he peeked at his deck um, for for some reason last turn. I think he has an ability to do that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why he would lose from reserve then. He could just activate, unless, unless he's got a bunch of fives. <laughs> I think it was down to one, and I, I forgot if he used the swamp to look for a creature, but uh, it could have been something where he, where he uh, looked for it. Yeah.
Yeah, like if you're Sean, you had to activate everything that turn, right? To give yourself the option of drawing up. I would have, yeah, I would have thought that drawing up is pretty. I mean, I, I think either way, it's probably pretty safe. It's just not likely he's going to be able, Timo's going to be able to put those cards back unless he's got a reactor terminal in the deck. Yeah, so even if Timo hits the Abyss and that gets him 8 to 13, then he needs, what, five used interrupts, basically? And the rest of his eight other, card other ways to retrieve cards, which Dark doesn't no, have that many four. options for. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're Sean, yeah, he should have activated everything, probably. Yeah. I, I think he's still pretty safe here. I mean, maybe, maybe like the only thing that would be uh, problematic is if like Perk Strike came out and he's able to push through a bunch of battles that, that got the retrieval. Did he not activate S foils when he could have? I guess he has to. Yeah, I think he wants to move away from, uh, mm -hmm. or at least he's thinking about moving away from uh, Coralag here. Not sure it matters again too too much here, but uh, he's got an extra I think that was fleet. That's either got to go to Kessel or Coralag probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, what does he really care? Even if Timo draws a five, Timo's going to peel two at Coralag. That's like the worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think that. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it here. I mean, Timo, even if Timo deploys something and puts a beat down on it, it's like not going to... Uh, again, he needs so many more cards in deck that uh, I don't think it really matters a ton what uh, Sean's doing here. Yeah, but if Sean activated S-Foils and then put the X-Wing off of the fleet to Kessel, that's what? Uh, what, 3, 5, plus... That's like 22 power, right? Yeah. And he just tries to kick him out off of Kessel, and then at least then on his next turn... He gets the Kessel Drain through, even if he only has, like, two cards left after um, all mm -hmm. the damage. Yeah, that, that, that seems like a smart play to, you know, be able to at least have the option to push through more damage if you do it the next turn. Because uh, I think, you know, it's one of those things where it looks like there's a, a bunch of avenues to victory for Sean here. Uh, so as long as he thinks his way through right here, I think he'll be in good shape. That, that looked like it would have been a smart play to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bigger thing that um, Uncle Curveball is pointing out in the chat. That is a much bigger factor, I think, here, is the uh, the fact that uh, Sean allowed the opportunity for Timo to just peel everything and not get the 10, was it? 10 retrieval in with ornament. Even if <laughs> I think he was about to draw two battle destiny, but it's like, who cares if you only draw one as long as you get that retrieval yep. in? That's way more valuable. So he's going to, I guess, stick Obi there and just have him sit and block the three drain at the swamp. And then if he eats eight, maybe it'll be six if he cancels one with Rebel Fleet. Yeah, he'll probably get one from Coralag too, but uh, it'll be probably seven next turn. Oh no, he's moving uh, moving two core lag there, so you're at six. Mm -hmm. I'd be tempted to move that X-wing from Kashik over to core lag and just try to muscle him off of core. Like make make Timo have to make the decision, or I guess he's kind of doing the same. Oh, that's what he just did. Right? Kashik to, I mean, move it to Kessel. So then at least on his turn, you can activate S-Foils and just try to overflow Teemo. Yep. Or at least just boot him off there so he can get that Kessel drain through. But he's not going to eat six. He's got, he, I guess Sean might be able to get two more cycles in. He's got 13 and it looks, uh, it might, no, it might be tough because he would need the X-Wing to cancel the drain. To, yeah. Timo activated everything, so I wonder if he ever found the ornament. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would have thought that he would have played it there if he, uh, at some point, if he did. Mm -hmm. It would be ridiculous here if Timo had limited resources. <laughs> oh, that no, doesn't help him. That doesn't help the differential. He needs Timo needs to get forced back. Yeah, never mind. That, that would help win the game, but. He's, In fairness, uh, it's a hit does cancel limited resources. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah. There's a and, uh, I, the I might have had one if he, he was stashing that X Wing at Korolag. TK422. Well, like I said, it took me forever to get for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't think there's any way. I just the question is that kind of makes you think of would is it the deck list? I, I would hate to see the deck list error be the differentiator, but <laughs> Timo's got a way to basically put his entire hand back and retrieve. Mm -hmm. That'd be tough. <laughs> Got two sights in his hand. Oh, he couldn't have been holding them the whole game, right? He must have just got them late. Yeah, I'm sure he just got them. Um, I, I'm sure he would have been chomping at the bit to put them down you know, with uh, yeah, basically no ground presence. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter when you're flipped because the operatives themselves um, can deploy the sights. I was going to say, so you don't have to worry about flipping too quickly and then not be able to get your sights out. All right. And well, now his uh, Abyss and Ornament, should he have everything, gets more back. He could land uh, He could land the scout at the docking bay. Yeah, he, and then he could kind of shuffle people around. So he could... Salacious <laughs> Crumb. <laughs> wow, lots of cheap deploy. So even if he has the ornament now, like I would have been tempted not to. I mean, oh, he's blocking the two. Okay. Alright, well, let's not. If he's oh, got the boy. ornament, then he might be in business oh, here because he's be got. Uh, yeah. It's only he's only getting one damage here. Timo, do we ever see Den of Thieves in Timo's deck? It's gotta be in the but I haven't seen it yet. Hmm. That's interesting. I guess yeah. Eh, no. Sean only has four force down. What do you think of that move away from Kessel to Kashik? I don't know. I think uh, that is now a drain of three, all th other things equal. So, what they put him down, the three cards in hand, and then, yeah, now he's doing the Abyss for seven here. So, That's I think right. it's still just short. We're talking about 18. But now, of course, Abyss is a used interrupt, so he's cycling it. Mm hmm. And he can now just lose three from hand, Timo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he has a huge... And he's definitely going to finish Sean on his turn. Yep. Hmm. So 14, 17. So it's going to go to Lost Piles, right? <laughs> so it's going to go to Lost Probably. Piles? Wow. So it loses a couple Imperials from his hand. I should have noticed what the... Uh, I should have written down what the Lost Piles were. So one of these two guys is going to have to pull up the replay. Because <laughs> you now there's no way. So Sean is definitely done on his turn. He's not going to be able to overflow the guy at uh, Coruscant. Oh, no, wait. Timo's at 18, so Timo's going to win it outright. I can't do math. Or maybe I was doing the math as the cards were getting retrieved. 
Or maybe it was before Abyssin went to his use pile was my issue. <clears throat> yep. So, you know, Teemo's going to win, even if he's not going to go to Lost Piles. Yep, so 18, yes. Wow, by just, <laughs> by just enough force. That's wild. So he's not going to be able to overflow him here. He can't stop any of the ground... He can't stop the ground drains enough. Wow. Play organized attack. But now Timo has what? 5 4 3. So 12 4 fit. Yeah, he'll be able to cover easy. Plus he's drawing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's like the skin of his teeth that Timo pulled this up. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, know, I know what Timo's, Timo's trying to give constructive feedback, but um, I hope Sean doesn't take it the wrong way that he's, um, I hope Sean doesn't interpret it as taunting. I think he's just kind of thinking out loud, Timo. But yeah, so now Timo just lose two of these characters. And on his turn, mm -hmm. he's got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. That's a lot of damage. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Um, looks like this will end out soon, so maybe we'll start doing kind of sort of a bit of a wrap up. But James, thanks for joining me on this. Uh, no problem. Wonderful. Thanks afternoon. for sharing. Apologies again to to the folks streaming if there was audio. Was, I'm seeing all these drop frames, and it's definitely my fault. I am. Um, I should have realized that I should have gone for the hardwire um, connection, and I'll, I'll address that on future such streams. Um, but yeah, it looks like Timo's going to be the first person in the event to get to the top four. Just want to encourage everyone to follow um, the Twitter account at SWCCG, which James does a great job of leading, and, uh, and other PC media to stay uh, in tune of what's going on with the rest of the retro event. Looks like they're doing math here of kind of the uh, what could have happened. <laughs>